Researchers believe they've identified one reason why individuals with COVID-19 may become so ill. In this episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, we'll dig into that data. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. Let's talk about early warning systems. These are the things that alert your neighbor that something is wrong and that you need assistance. I've drawn a really rough version of two early warning systems um, from, uh, from history. So the watchtower, where someone would stand up and scan the countryside and then light a signal fire to alert those around them that something was wrong, and a bell tower that would ring and alert the community in the countryside that uh, help was needed. Your body has an early warning system. It's called your innate immune system. And we're specifically gonna talk about a part of that innate immune system called interferons. Even more specifically, type one interferons. So interferons are proteins that alert uninfected cells that a virus has invaded the body. And that early warning system does two things for the surrounding cells. They ramp up their own defenses in preparation to try to repel the virus or whatever the invader is. And it also sends signals to the rest of the body that we're under attack and we need not just our general first line defense, but we need specialized forces, antibodies produced by B cells or killer T cells that specifically hunt down and destroy the invader. All right, the work that we're gonna talk about with interferons came out of the same lab, two separate but complementary papers that were published last week in the journal Science. And this work actually originated from earlier studies that found that by interfering with the interferons, get it? By messing with the interferons, certain individuals would be at a higher risk of serious consequences from the flu. So the researchers wondered, do you see the same sort of thing in individuals that have serious complications from COVID-19? So this first paper looked at 659 patients who had life-threatening pneumonia as a complication of COVID-19 infection. And they sequenced through the genes that provide instructions for how to make this type of interferons. And among those genes, specifically looking at eight genes, 23 of the 659 patients, so about three and a half percent of the patients, were born with mutations in their genes that impacted the ability of the interferons to do their job. So that would be like if you built a watchtower and you forgot to build a ladder, or you built a bell tower and you never even put a door in place. Those proteins cannot do their job to signal that something is wrong. So three and a half percent. They then went on and did a second study looking at a different part of the interferon pathway. So they looked at 987 individuals also who had life-threatening pneumonia from COVID-19. They compared it to 663 individuals with mild or asymptomatic COVID-19, and then over 1,200 healthy control individuals. And in this case, they weren't looking at their genes. They weren't looking for mutations. They were looking for something called autoantibodies. Now you've heard me talk about antibodies a lot on um, Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. These are proteins that our immune system make and these proteins identify viruses or bacteria or proteins associated with those viruses or bacteria and they bind to them and they signal their destruction. We've talked a lot about neutralizing antibodies. Autoantibodies do the same sort of thing. They recognize proteins in cells and bind to them and signal their destruction, but they're incorrectly oriented to recognize our own cells and proteins. So these are like traitors in our midst. If we go back to the watchtower example, it would be like somebody that came and intentionally took away the ladder or took down the bell so that it couldn't do its job. Autoantibodies are at the heart of a lot of autoimmune diseases. And in this instance, the researchers were looking to see if there were autoantibodies towards interferons in these individuals that had life-threatening pneumonia from COVID-19. And in fact, 10% of this population had those autoantibodies, which means that for these individuals, their interferons were being attacked by their own immune system and unable to signal that early warning system. 
which meant the virus was able to move much more quickly and get much deeper into the body before the secondary forces were able to marshal a defense against it. They didn't find these autoantibodies in any of the individuals with mild or asymptomatic cases, and they found them in four, about a third of a percent of the healthy controls. Intriguingly, the vast majority of these individuals with autoantibodies were males. And if you remember, we've talked about the fact that men seem to be at a higher risk than women in developing serious side effects of COVID-19 and dying from COVID-19. And this might be a part of that process. So what does this mean? Well, for starters, it tells us that at least in this population, and this data clearly needs to be replicated, but at least in this population, 15% of the individuals with serious COVID-19 complications have something wrong with their early response system. It also suggests we might want to think about screening individuals for the presence of these mutations or perhaps for the presence of these autoantibodies when they come in before we think about initiating treatment. And it also provides guidance for the kind of treatment that we might provide. Individuals that have genetic mutations and aren't making functional interferons could benefit from being given therapeutic doses of those interferons. That wouldn't work for people that have autoantibodies because their autoantibodies would just destroy them. Instead, you would have to look at therapies that inactivate those autoantibodies or clear them from the body. And then one last piece, it means that you need to be really careful when we think about convalescent plasma because as these individuals recover, they would be candidates for, for giving convalescent plasma, but their autoantibodies would not be something that you would want to pass on to a patient who was ill. So you would need a way to either screen them out of the convalescent plasma population or find some way to remove the autoantibodies. That's a lot of content around early warning systems, but it excites me because it means we are beginning to answer why do some people get so ill and other people have no symptoms whatsoever. If you know someone who you think would benefit from learning about this conversation, please share this video with them. I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. Take care.